Welcome to another episode of The Doc Show, where we talk about music production and digital audio workstations in a way that is just open to wherever we're at on the journey. No gatekeeping nonsense, um, all, all of that good stuff. And today, my guest is Valeska St. Jock, and she is the creator and main producer of Saint Say Lo-Fi on YouTube, and we're going to talk all about her lo-fi journey. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on the show. I am truly honored to be on, be on here. <laughs> yeah, no, it worked out so well. So we met at uh, C2E2 uh, mm -hmm. at some of the uh, creator meetups they had. And um, yeah, and it was, which was just so cool that we had those meetups this year. Yes, yes. I met a lot of interesting people and, and you're one of them. So it was really cool to connect with different people with different backgrounds and all of that. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess tell the audience a little bit about where you're at on your production journey, how I got into lo-fi, all that good stuff. Yeah. So um, I'll kind of start like super way back, but just follow me. So <laughs> <laughs> um, when I was young, like six, I got into piano, was forced into it, wasn't the biggest fan, um, but then somehow slowly crept back into playing piano around like middle school, mm -hmm. um, just because I wanted to like learn different pieces on my own. Um, and then somehow in that process, I just started to like create melodies and songs some of them had lyrics, some of them didn't. I was just creating these random songs. I never recorded anything. Um, but I would say that is like the spark, like what sparked in me to be interested in like music composition. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll fast forward to uh, college, which I went to NYU. So shout out to NYU. Woo. Um my educational background has nothing to do with music at all. <laughs> That's not why I went to college. Um, but at NYU, they do have um, uh, courses for uh, non-major music. Mm -hmm. um, and I was able to pick like elective courses. And so I was just like, let me just, you know, pick these courses. These credits will go into my overall credit so why not um so I went into um an intro to MIDI course nice and an introduction to music production so those were like one for like each semester and those gave me like those courses just gave me like a really good foundation on like what is a DAW mm -hmm. like what what do these musicians use to create the music in this platform what are the tools used the breakdown of it um so that gave me like a really good uh educational foundation on just music production midi and all of that um and then I wish I could say that from then on it like it just my education in that just continued. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but once I graduated, I focused more on what I had my degree in. Mm -hmm. um, and then I kind of did created beats here and there. Mm -hmm. So it was very on and off, not consistent. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I always, you know, music is like, number one for me you mm -hmm. know despite me kind of going on this other path I was just still just coming back creating these songs not doing much of anything with them mm -hmm. um most if not all of them are still in my computer <laughs> mm -hmm. um but I just I couldn't stop basically yeah. um so finally uh I would say honestly like last year is when I was just like, you know what, let me just give myself a chance and just pursue this. Wherever I am, let me just go at it. Mm -hmm. And um, and from there, that's 
basically how Saint Sai Lo-Fi, the YouTube mm-hmm. channel came to be, it was just that, uh, just pushing myself to pursue music production the best way that I can. Mm-hmm. Um, and that way, like just having this channel is just pushing me to just create more music and to actually put it out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I feel like that's that's a trouble for a lot of like beginners and just like, you know, just doing and just putting yourself out there. Yeah. So that's where that's where I'm at with my journey right now. That's that's awesome. Thank you for 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 sharing all that. And yeah, mm. I love I love any any challenge where it's just like, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to do it. Here's here's a basic goal. Here's my like just like giving yourself just a it just needs to be out there goal. Yeah. Just so like, helpful. Give, give yourself a chance. You you never know. You never know what will happen when you just allow yourself like it's almost like you have to give yourself permission mm-hmm. to like pursue your dreams yeah you know? yeah. yeah yeah and I I like that it's it's you have this setup where it is this like it it is this like relaxing hobby and it's cool that you're like making the music that people like chill to but then in the process of it it is also your your chill thing Yes, yes, it, it it definitely helps uh, me to unwind because mm-hmm. um, I am not doing this full time. So I'm mm-hmm. still part time and I still have my main day job. But yeah. um, just, you know, making time for it, I, I definitely feel a difference in myself. Like, mm-hmm. like, I do feel happier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and I think even if you are a professional in the arts, it's so important to like know like like there will always be like day job art and like mm-hmm. hobby art like in and things where it's like someone else is the client and when you are the client and when you are the client, like just do you do you <laughs> like you know right right yeah but it is different being on both ends Mm -hmm. um but yeah being on the end of creating is Mm -hmm. is something that I thoroughly enjoy (laughs) yeah when we did our pre-interview chat uh you were talking about different Mm -hmm. YouTube channels uh that you uh were finding information from what is there any particular uh things that you watched that really like inspired you Yes. Yeah, so um, I fell into this channel. It's called uh, Mixing with Mike. Mm-hmm. And basically, he just goes step by step on the mixing process. And he at the beginning, he does clearly state like, you know, there's no one way to mix mm-hmm. music. You know, it's each project is different. Um But there are some fundamental basics to just understand when it comes to just sound and Mm -hmm. working with sound. Um, And he mentioned something uh, in between the lines of uh, creating like a 3D sound field. So Mm -hmm. basically, I'm sure a lot of people like have heard this where you you put your headphones on and you're listening to whatever Mm -hmm. and it sounds like like it's like the music like you've entered into the music yeah like you like it's almost like you're you don't have headphones on Mm -hmm. because of how well it was like mixed and that has to do with you know a combination of volume automation reverb compression all of that but trying to use those tools to kind of create that effect Mm. so that that has stuck with me in you know when I do certain choices um to play around with the sound field Mm. if if that makes sense um so another thing he like mentioned about that was the placement of frequencies Mm. and how they fit in a space for high frequencies you can think of them like sounds like they're like the cloud 
the clouds mm-hmm. in the sky or like there's sounds in the sky. They're like high up mm-hmm. above. Um, then you have your uh, your mid highs, which could be since I'm I'm, I'm already outside, mm-hmm. could be like the trees, just everything in the center. And then you have um, your base frequencies, which are the vibrations on the ground. So that's like a, a vertical kind of dimension mm. when you kind of think of the way frequencies sit in a space. Yeah. So, yeah. And then, which which makes sense because it's like you can you can kind of feel it even when you're listening to music when you hear like a good bass it's like rumbling mm-hmm. the ground or a super high pitch frequency it's like above you yeah so yeah pretty pretty interesting stuff and I, I hope I'm explaining oh, it <laughs> no I I really love yeah. that imagery a lot like that is so yeah that is so grounding and and like, I, I know my first introduction to frequencies was like listening for vowels, which would just like was a whole other, it was like witchcraft. It was like, okay, cool. But like, <laughs> you know, cause, cause you're like, you have to listen very closely for like the, oh, and then, and then like the chest voice or the more like, yeah, you know, vocal range stuff is more in like a sort of like an awe and then it goes up from there. So like I did the vowel method, but man, I like the vibe of just describing it as nature. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Like it gives you, it's like you can visually place sound. Right. It's like, it's like interesting. And then all those sounds that the vocalist makes are just the metaphorical person in the thing. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Ah, that's it's, it's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I love that a lot. Um, cool. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just going to put that in my pocket because that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, why don't we, why don't we take a look at this track that you've got? Uh, what is the, mm-hmm. what is the song that you're sharing with us? And yes, tell people a little bit about it. Yes. So um, this track, it's called Solar Flare. It's from um, one of my releases, my YouTube releases, um, which is called Moonrise. Mm. And it's basically um, a set list of beats that are synth wave lo-fi um so basically all the tracks have a synth wave type of format Mm -hmm. um with lo-fi integrated Uh, and can you for for those who are watching uh probably mainly my dad uh, <laughs> uh uh-huh. who might not know who lo- what lo-fi is can you kind of give the, mm-hmm. the basic explanation <laughs> so yes lo-fi uh what the word literally means low fidelity mm-hmm. so in a lot of mainstream music the way uh you go about the production you use high fidelity so you want to make sure everything is crisp clear um like that's like the main point like very clear Mm -hmm. with low fidelity it's like the opposite of what people do for mainstream music Mm -hmm. uh it is greatly encouraged to have like background noises hisses um the instruments are not as clear there's a lot of um distortion with the instruments so um mostly all of all of that distortion and all of that is to create nostalgia mm. basically so a lot of the like the sounds would be uh like a vinyl crackling or a cassette tape running mm. in the background and so it just creates like this nice cozy interesting space Mm -hmm. because you have all these background noises yeah um which surprisingly you know fits perfectly (laughs) yeah with yeah with you know that type of lo-fi vibe yeah I, I I think I would describe it as like um it's music that it it helps to give you that like sensory input you need 
of when you're trying to focus on something without being distracting. Yes. Like it just l- like m- makes your brain feel cozy and then yes. you can focus on the things that you want to focus yes. on. Yes. So, so it is, um, uh, so the way that I felt on lo-fi music was during the pandemic, which I think mm-hmm. a lot of people uh, discovered lo-fi at that time because we're stuck in our homes mm-hmm. <laughs> with nothing much to do. And a lot of this music was uh, very uh, soothing for a lot of people because, um, you know, COVID is, mm-hmm. you know, very anxiety <laughs> yeah. type of event. Um, so just uh, having all these different playlists on YouTube started to spark up. Mm. Um, so a lot of people would use that music in the background you could be like reading some people use it to go to sleep some people use it as they're doing chores but it's just you know just chill music in the background Mm. that you just have playing as you're going about your day studying or playing a game or whatever yeah yeah Yeah. um well let's let's take a look at this track Mm -hmm. is still going <laughs> there, oh, it stopped. Oh. there was like some reverb that happened there <laughs> yep that's one of the synths uh, <laughs> oh man okay yeah so let's let's break it down um so um yeah I guess tell me a little bit about your organizational system yes yeah, so I did end up correcting uh the sections Mm -hmm. (laughs) so it could make a bit more sense um so I do have like like a eight bar intro Mm -hmm. going on and then this small section is like I I just named it like section a Mm -hmm. and then the bridge that kind of leads to section b Mm -hmm. which you could say is acts like the chorus Mm -hmm. um and then from this intro to section B, it's looped. Okay. So I loop it two more times. Okay. Um, and then I have the outro, which is basically what was being looped and fading out. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. so you have that like that first third of the of the piece, and then it's and then it's repeating and then it fades. Yes. So that's a very common thing in, in mm-hmm. lo-fi music is that the music is looped. Um, mm-hmm. You're not going to get too much variation. Um, and that's just so that there's not too much going on. Mm-hmm. So it, it, again, stays in the background. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, so to look at like the intro, which um, when I was creating this track, uh, I did not start with how it started. I actually had the chorus part okay. um, created first. Yeah. And I started to play around with like these chords. Um... But 
if I had this first mm-hmm. and then I started to to build around that okay um but then as I was building around those chords I was like what's like a better way to like enter this song because I feel mm-hmm. like everything's happening all at once <laughs> yeah 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 so then um I started to just play around with like melodies with those chords and Mm -hmm. I think let me see yeah so this um plucked sweet synth is like the the melody center Mm -hmm. of the song um so I think I started to just cool play around with yeah with just and is a that melody what I'm in the in the piano roll that's hanging out in the bottom there. Oh yes, these are the notes that are being okay. played. Cool. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Um, and then I was just like, how can I build from mm-hmm. that melody? Because I kind of pushed all of this to the side. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and then from there, I I always been like a good. 10 minutes like searching through so a big thing is that I use only MIDI (laughs) yeah 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 just so just virtual instruments I know a lot of people like are actually recording their instruments um I don't have that luxury because I only have a piano and a guitar but I don't really know how to play the guitar but I'm planning to learn (laughs) and synths are great because then you get all of the weird sounds yes 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 so this is all uh virtual Mm -hmm. instruments uh with midi um so then uh let me see what's the other so I did have the piano playing here So the melody's playing off of the piano melody. Nice. So to to give it like some ambiance, uh, there are these two. I know I put this under the key section, but I feel like it plays more as like a pad. Yeah. Um. And it just adds that that air. Cool. And, then, and mm-hmm. is the and the, is the little like the whir sound that happened? Is that in the cloud shimmer? The thing that. Yep. Yep. Okay. I'm cool. gonna I'm gonna solo it. Yeah. Um. So you can just kind of hear. It's pretty cool. It's got some, is that, it's also doing the cricket sounds? Yeah. Yeah. And this is like a preset on Logic. Yeah. You know, you don't really have to go too far. <laughs> um, oh, man. I, so it's I, on Alchemy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, I'm sorry. I have zero chill about the synth. And now we're going to, I'm going to be very good friends with Cloud Shimmer because I love yeah. that. The, yeah like, it's so effects. it's like glitter it's like you just added glitter into this song and i'm just like oh wow this sounds really really cool um so yeah it's from the plugin um alchemy mm-hmm. uh and i'm sure if you just search um cloud shimmer you'll yeah. find it cool. um and you can kind of just manipulate things here um I will not act like I know like like everything with all the buttons mm-hmm. I am still learning um mm-hmm. but a lot of times what I'll do is I will just play around with them <laughs> yeah just play around with them whatever sounds good to me that's that's I, what we're gonna do. <laughs> I, I I fell off of it, but I used to. I was doing a, a TikTok reactions to like just going through alchemy and being like, mm-hmm. "What does this sound like?" And then yes, just madly cackling. Um, yes, yeah. And but... then I, I recently learned that you can even like. Oh wait, you can't see this. Let me put this on. Oh yeah, like yeah. Okay, 
You can see this. Okay. I, um, I can't, I can't see uh, if you have, if you have another window, I can't, I can't see it right now. Hmm. Uh, wait, wait. Um, you might have putting... to, if you're just sharing the DAW session, you might have to either, oh, there it is. You see it? Yeah, I see it. Okay, perfect, perfect. So um, I like recently learned that you could just like move this and kind of like mix like the different, uh, uh, what do you call that? Like settings. Yeah. With it. Like you don't have to just, you don't have to just choose one. And I was thinking like, I, I would literally like click yeah. on them, <laughs> but I, I like accidentally like held click and I was like, what? You can but move this. I am. Yeah. I am forever changed. <laughs> also, this this facial expression is why my business is Sparkle Bard Studios. Yeah. Because yeah. This is this is the Sparkle Bard where I'm just like, what? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's like, oh my gosh, the things you'll learn when you just act randomly. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um. So yeah, that's that's an interesting fact for people who didn't know. <laughs> that's oh you can gosh. do that on on the Alchemy plugin. Um, and then there is this analog bubbles, which also adds to like the ambiance. And I copied, I copied what's being played with the piano, but honestly, mm -hmm. it's not really playing notes. It's just playing sound effects, mm -hmm. but at least it's in the correct key. Very cool. If that makes sense. Um, I'm going to remove this seat. It's mm. it's very subtle, but yeah. it does come through the mix. Yeah. It sounds very like robotic ish. Um, and this one, I believe, I kept it. Yeah, I kept it center because I didn't want to increase the volume on it. I just wanted it to just really be in the background. Mm. Um. So yeah, that's that's what makes up the intro oh wait um and then for the percussion section um I do use loops um for my percussion section mm -hmm. um and usually I'll come up with the melody first and then do the per percussion end Mm -hmm. at like a separate time um so what that sounds like is it's sounding like a hi-hat mm -hmm. snare yeah um loop and it's very just subtle and it's not very super percussive like it's not like cutting through it's like very subtle yeah um it's just keep it's so keeping I, the time but it's like you know, it's not being over the top about it. Yes. Um, so that in, in combination with just everything, it just comes comes together. Um, and then before I move on to the next section, uh, the automation, um, I did play around with the panning uh if I go here oh yes. wow <laughs> so I yes <laughs> I did go in with the pencil which you can go up here choose the pencil tool and I literally just drew in which side it should go on and I, I think am... I didn't know you could uh, do that oh no <laughs> oh oh you can oh really like that yeah that's cool yes Yep, you can write it in. Um, and then I was trying to uh, create like a, sorry, I'm trying to find. Okay, so these mimic each other, mm. the main synth. So I'll kind of play it. So they'll follow, they're going side by side, like together.
Yeah. Mm. And I was gonna have them go in like opposite directions. Yeah. But it sounds you can actually hear the panning when they're moving together. So yeah, I just it reinforces it. Yeah, yeah. So I just I just did that because that's what sounded right to me. <laughs> um and then moving on to like section A, which you could call that like the verse. Yeah. Um, and the reason why I determined this is its own section is because these instruments get introduced, um, which let's just hear what they're doing. Okay, yes, they're playing the same mm -hmm. thing as the plucked sweet synth. Mm -hmm. So it just adds more body to that main melody, um, but very subtly. Um, these are, yeah, they're, they're also um, synths. Um, and this one is a, sorry, let me see. Uh, yeah, it's the uh, like the vintage electric piano mm. um, software instrument on Logic. Uh, and basically, I panned. Sorry, I'm also looking at my mixer here so I can explain. Can you see that? I, I cannot see the mixer. Oh, okay. Oh, it's no. cool. Um, so basically, I panned the piano and this uh, electric piano. I panned them from one side to the other. Oh, cool. Um, so if you... So this one's playing on the left. Yeah. And the amplified piano on the right. Okay. But you do kind of hear it on both sides because I did add reverb. To both of them very cool so they are kind of entering into the set the center mm -hmm. and kind of blending together yeah just so it just just makes it sound fuller um but everything else before is like the same so we have like the same uh oh no i'm i'm lying <laughs> sorry <laughs> um this is this is where the the bass gets introduced <laughs> okay um, so yeah, the bass uh, comes in at this part. Um, so let's just hear how the bass is. Um, which, by the way, uh, these two tracks um, yeah. that are acting as my bass uh, they're not necessarily bass synthesizers. Mm -hmm. um, they're just the regular synthesizer, but I just played the notes lower. Yeah, um, they have a good low end, and they yes, yeah, yes. Um, and they, I'm basically playing what I played on the piano part at the beginning here. Mm -hmm. Because that stopped playing by here, and then mm -hmm. the they this takes over to play yeah the rest yeah um Ooh, and it's got that that like aftertaste to it of the like I don't know how to yes. describe it. <laughs> it yeah that wah wah wah, 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 wah. <laughs> yeah um and I think that's coming from. From this one, this hold and dissolve. Mm. Yeah. And again, from Alchemy. Yeah. Yeah. Alchemy has some good stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, Alchemy is great. Like, I think, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's what makes up my base. And then as we approach the bridge section, 
Um, then I add a lot more percussion mm. and this uh, this lead, um, which sounds like this. just adding like a new melody yeah um originally when I was adding this I was like deciding if I wanted to keep in because it is pretty loud yeah yeah (laughs) yeah it's definitely Um, like a hero piece (laughs) yes uh but I removed it and I I don't know I just felt like it should it should be there Mm -hmm. because it kind of it kind of helps lead into the chorus section Mm -hmm. so I I kept it um and I also added the piano underneath it doesn't really do too much um but it just adds yeah more to the sound yeah. So I just kind of added that under the lead. Um and then uh and then let's look at the percussion because the percussion I did um so another thing that I will uh, also mention is I did uh use this plugin that I purchased. It's called Retroverse. Okay. Um, oh, okay. You can't see this. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's very cool looking. Um, and basically it just has pads, keys, bass, drums, um, that sound very, that you would use on a synth track. Okay. Um, so the drums do sound, Yeah. you know, it gives it that. Oh, I think I heard a, a yeah. Prince drum in there somewhere. <laughs> there was yeah. Like a, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, it's unfortunate that they don't, like, label. It just says drum one, two, three, four, five, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just have to hear it and just be like, okay, that's the kick, I, I guess. <laughs> it, the the um, one that goes boom and the one that goes clack. Right, <laughs> right, right. No, you just like, okay, I'm assuming that's what this is. Um, I mentioned that because in this, on this uh, little one, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know what it is. Yeah, sounds like a sorry. A, yeah, uh, there might be some. Uh, sounds like song. The boop boop yeah boop, 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 boop. yeah. Is that like a wooden? I don't know. I don't know it, what it is. It, it but... could be like a it could be like a, a synth tom or something. Y- yeah, or yeah. something. But it sounds great. So I just added it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um and basically what drives like the bridge into like the main section is definitely what's happening with with the drum section. So I do add uh multiple kicks. Mm. Um, which I realized when I was looking at it today, it doesn't uh, follow my or uh, like original placement. So mm-hmm. like how this, if you could see that MIDI, I wonder if I can. Ooh, where's... Let's see. There, there we go. Is. Um, how it's on the one beat. Mm-hmm here yeah but then when I looped it that first beat is not on the one beat it comes sooner yeah usually you know that would not work yeah (laughs) um it would sound off but it works here interesting and I will play it yeah um I know this is like a big no no, <laughs> but I don't know. And I'll 
play with the metronome so it kind of makes sense. Then being. But somehow it 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 works with what's going on here. I'm going to I'm going to play everything. So we're going to play it from the beginning. Uh yeah, let's just play from the beginning. Yeah, it it, it like it still it still works. <laughs> And it's like, maybe it's just like falling on the and in the right way or something like that. Yes. Um, yeah. It is on the, wait. Uh, um, I guess you would say it's on the upbeat or the downbeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And then it, be, it also kind of, sorry. It, it, sorry, it can be confusing sometimes where to find the upbeat, but in the in the grid. But I think I think that's what's happening. I think yes, um, and it does change the rhythm of mm -hmm. it, but in a good way. Yeah, no, it works <laughs> um, really well. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I'm just like, oh wow, this uh, this actually happened. That's pretty cool. Um, and as uh, the bridge is playing. I have this um, drum fill situation, which kind of pushes you into the main chorus part. Um, right, and then you're able to enjoy the So yeah, that's like my favorite part of the track. Yeah. Uh because it 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 changes quite a bit. But a, like it's like a good subtle change. Yeah. Um it builds really well. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a it's not an over the top build. It's like like the like like the just the perfect build for this mm -hmm. track. <laughs> yeah, no, like those those drums go off, but like also it's not so distracting. Like when you're like, yeah, working, you're, you can yeah, just be like, type type type, get it, drums, type 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 type. You know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Do your thing. Um, yeah. So somehow you know this looping is not looping exactly. It does mm -hmm. it does get back on um on like the correct beat uh let me see uh that i thought it did or maybe or wait yes it does fall on the, the one beat again eventually um which is pretty cool how that kind of worked out um and yeah so uh, let me see. Um, I'm trying to see. Oh, okay. So then, uh, as we approach like the main part, this I call it section B. Um, what I do add is this. It's called boarding area. Mm. Um, and I'll just solo it just here. It just sounds like. Someone singing, yeah, like a like a voice, a vocal. Oh, it's effect. very, it's very cinematic. Yeah. Um, and I think, yes. Let's just add. Yeah, it's just mm. all of that together is just it just meshes so well. Yeah. That's like my favorite thing when I'm like creating a track. Yeah. And then I find that instrument that just 
jives so well with the others. I'm just like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. Um, so yeah, it's these three tracks, which the cold shimmer has been playing the whole time. Mm-hmm. And this boarded area, I'm just trying to see. Um, Cause a lot of times I would play something and it's being played on multiple different tracks. So I'm yeah. trying to see if, um, oh no, I think Cloud Shimmer and Boarding Area are playing the same. Mm. Yes, yes. Yeah. Do you still have the metronome on? Oh. And if you kind of look at the panning as well, um, I think I kind of made the boarding area kind of delayed in the panning. So it's almost like it's following Mm. the cloud shimmer. Yeah, I wanted to. uh, Yeah, you can even see it in the way those circles are going. Yeah. So it's I it's like it's it's just kind of following it. Yeah. Which sounds pretty cool. Um and what else is going on? And then for the percussion, I just have this one loop going on. Um hmm. So um, another thing with uh, lo-fi tracks is you want your your drum patterns to be uh, simple and not Mm -hmm. too complicated. Um, So I know like in the bridge part, it does kind of, you know, a lot of things that are happening in the drum section. Mm -hmm. Uh, so to just simplify that, I I didn't continue what was going on. I just I just thought that this loop was enough. Yeah. For the percussion, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, section. I love like to. It's cool to see the like start simple bunch, and then now we're just back to this one, and like yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Um. So that makes up the different parts. And so like when it comes to like the arrangement of like a lo-fi song, whenever I I create, you know, what I think if it needs to build more, something else needs to happen. And then I'll play it through. And if it loops back in a way that I like, then I'll stop there. Oh, cool. Like, I won't continue to build more parts, if that makes sense. I like that. Yeah, so you, like, listen through and you're like, this feels complete, and also I want to do it again. Yes, yes. Um, So, yeah, that's what makes up the first loop, and then it just loops on. Um. Did I uh, go through everything? Um, I think so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like my favorite part of creating tracks is creating all the different uh, melodies and kind of mm-hmm. like stacking them up together. Yeah. So for like the chorus part, um, I do have like these brassy synths um which creates like like just the the chord progression um of the section and then i believe I think this one's my main melody and then I'm trying to like harmonize with and 
I think the boarding area is trying to harmonize with the hall sleeve. Yeah, just creating all those melodies and harmonies and all of that like that's like my favorite <laughs> that that is so intricate and I love it yeah. so much um yes and thank it's, you yeah and I and it's I really like love how visual like your organization is on this and how like it is very it, it's it it, it's like I said earlier, like it does seem like this very like meditative, like puzzle solving mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. um, which, yeah. And I've been, I've, I know, I know that it, when I write in, in, in instrumental uh, versus lyrics, like it is this very, there, there is a different, there's a different vibe when you're just focusing on like yes. playing with the different synths and all of that stuff. Yes. Yeah. And I, I think I've told you before, because I, I am, you know, trying to songwrite for other mm -hmm. projects that I have in mind. And the instrumental part comes very, like a lot easier to me than mm -hmm. lyric writing, for yeah. whatever reason. It's like, I feel like the instrument can tell the story better than I can verbalize yeah. it. Um, which is interesting. Um, but it is still cool to find the words that mm. can go with what it what it is you're hearing yeah so that like you can logically kind of like put it together yeah um but yeah the instrumentation is like I can create just beats all day but then if you're asking okay now write the lyrics that should go with this I'll just be like oh give me like a week <laughs> right right and that yeah, yeah. Like lyric writing, there's a there's a lot of ego and there's a lot of just other things you have to like work out with it for sure. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you for thank you for breaking that down. Um, I went to I'm gonna put us back to the main screen so we can round out with our rapid fire questions. Yes. Um. All right. First one I always start with. Uh. So. Tell me about your favorite plugin as if you are a sugared up eight year old. Mm. So um, I have been playing with like uh, Isotope has this plugin, it's a uh, vocal synth. Mm. Um, and basically, you could use like Vocaloid and all these other effects for vocals, but I've been like, also applying them to instruments which like does interesting cool stuff so like just changing the way like the original version of an instrument through like vocaloid and all of that it's, mm -hmm. it's like pretty cool <laughs> that, that sounds so. really cool so like so like taking like a, a guitar and then putting it through like like a like a concert hall or something y yeah yeah it'll it'll like change the like just creating like another filter of it mm. basically yeah yeah it's pretty cool that sounds very cool yeah. um <laughs> oh man i i feel like a lot of times it's always something reverb related that people have to talk about which i, I mm. appreciate um yeah cool uh all right so next question what is one skill uh, in the production world that you are especially proud of uh, mastering or figuring out? Yes. Um, this might sound very simple, but like understanding how to do volume mm -hmm. in your mixing. Uh, I feel like if you like look through my uh, my YouTube playlist of all the beats, that I've made like the first one I it wasn't I wasn't too clear on that mm -hmm. um but I feel like I got like a lot better with the synth wave beats mm. and just how everything just sits very nicely volume wise 
um, I am proud that I kind of, it, it like clicked for me mm-hmm. <laughs> as I was doing that. So that makes a big difference. Like just understanding where like the levels of how yeah. instruments should be in relation to each other. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there, and that's, and that's a whole, like there's, that's a whole thing to like fine tune for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. And then the, the partner to that question, which we kind of talked about a little bit, but what is one skill that you are at like the very tip of the rabbit hole on? <laughs> Um, definitely, uh, I don't know, it's just, for me, like, mixing and also mastering, Mm. uh, because uh, my songs, they're not on any streaming services yet, Mm -hmm. um, which they will be soon. I'm working on that. Um, But, you know, that whole thing, when you just got to put your music in these platforms they have to be at a particular Mm -hmm. volume and then just understanding all of that and mastering with like the limiter yeah compression you know there's a whole other thing um and I want to do that for myself because I do have people that I can just like Mm -hmm. give it to um but it's nice to be like involved with every single process yeah. of, of whatever you're creating so it comes out exactly how you intended it to yeah um so I'm I'm definitely working more working more on that <laughs> yeah yeah that one that one is a that that one there's a lot of like very specific levels that you have to get to for sure mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. yeah um Okay, so next question. Mm-hmm. If you could design a plugin or piece of music technology by magic alone, what would you create? It would be a plugin that has every single instrument on it. Mm. <laughs> just every single instrument on one plugin, I can just click and choose <laughs> and go from there <laughs> yeah. instead of like, going through these libraries or downloading a separate guitar plugin Mm -hmm. you know you just have it all in one that I would I would appreciate that (laughs) yeah and like and also parameters to make it sound like that instrument so it's like not gonna let you like play a stupid high note on like a trumpet or whatever and yeah yeah Yes, yes. It would have all the 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 buttons you would need to tweak tweak it up, you mm-hmm. know, so it could, you know, have all its, you know, effect. <laughs> yeah, I that I find anytime I'm like mocking up an instrument in MIDI, and then I have to be like, what is the lowest note on this instrument, and right. what are the strings so that it like makes sense <laughs> right yeah yeah all of that will just be on that plugin <laughs> mm, that'd be perfect uh and then finally if you could invent your own genre what would it be um this this will sound like a little weird and a little random but like uh like a alt r&b hyper synth pop situation Mm. i I don't know it's like (laughs) um i love r&b and Mm -hmm. all the voicings with that and then just kind of putting it on like a synth vibe situation Mm. but with hyper pop it's like it's like pop on steroids yeah just combining all of that (laughs) would be like an interesting thing to explore <laughs> so like r&b plus like glitter and yeah r&b plus glitter <laughs> yeah 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 maybe like r&b on like steroids or something i don't know yeah <laughs> just like steroids super... full of glitter yes yeah there you go <laughs> this is making sense to anyone no, I could, I could see yeah. it. I could see it. <laughs> yeah. It'd be interesting to hear. Yeah. 
Uh, amazing. All right. Well, before I let you go, any um any final thoughts or things you want to say about lo-fi and what you do? Um. Yeah, I would definitely uh like encourage like people starting out on their journey or even like any genre really Mm -hmm. um like to I know there's like parameters of when you're doing something like with Mm -hmm. the lo-fi there are certain things you want to check in the box um but I'd, I'd encourage kind of getting out of that and seeing what comes from it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a very like experimental type of person, like, you know, like with that lead, it's like very kind of out there, but it just felt right with the track. Mm-hmm. So maybe that would be like the challenge is like, how to like fit this into this mold in a way mm-hmm. that could create something pretty interesting. So yeah. I would definitely encourage people to just, you know, when you're starting out to so just experiment, play around. Um, don't be afraid to like, just to do something different. Yeah. It may not be what most people do, but it could become the new thing that most people do. Cause that's usually how music kind of progresses is like someone does this thing that normally you're not supposed to do and -hmm. then it just creates this new sound and then everyone's like oh I like that and then they everyone else starts to kind of like follow that so I would definitely just encourage experimentation and 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 going from there I love it I love it yeah just just and it's like improvising with yourself, like just keep yes ending mm-hmm. it, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I guess tell people where they can find you, any exciting things you got going on, all that good stuff. Yes. Yeah, so you can find me here on YouTube. Um, my channel is Saint Sai Lo-Fi. Um, I do have a new set of beats that should be coming out like the first weekend of May. It'll be a Caribbean lo-fi theme Mm. so um definitely look out for that if you want to hear more music from me awesome all right thank you so much for being on the show this was awesome yes thank you for having me thank you so much for listening to the doc show make sure to take a look at our show notes to find out more about today's guest please make sure to subscribe wherever you are listening and send it to all your cool music nerd friends okay see you next time